worshiper, lover of leaving. Ours is no caravan of despair. Come yet again, come. Can you handle around this morning? This table start. Come, come, whoever you are. Come, whoever you are. Come, come, whoever you are. Wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving. Ours is no caravan of despair. Come, yeah. That was pretty good for a morning hymn. Look at you guys. Welcome to our fourth Pancakes and Poetry Breakfast. Woohoo! Special thanks to all of the folks who made this morning possible. Our kitchen gnomes who are out there working feverishly. Yay! Board chair slash chef extraordinaire, Megan Kelly, is wondering if anybody else is going to want more pancakes. Raise your hand if you think you're going to want more, because we'll load it up. That's a yes. That is a yes, load it up. All right. And our chalice is inside the sanctuary, but we can light the chalice in our hearts with a virtual chalice lighting. And this one is from Marion Wright Edelman. Please help us remember that all the darkness in the world cannot snuff out the light of one little candle. Help us to keep lighting our little candles until a mighty torch of justice sweeps our nation and our world. May it be so. And we have some announcements. Actually, I have five announcements. Okay, I have six announcements. <laughs> Announcement number one. I don't know how many times I've been asked if I know where I'm going, and if so, where am I going? Yes, I have known since May 15th where I am going, and because that congregation has not told their members yet, I can't tell you. Um, you won't tell anybody. Uh-huh, yeah, you can keep a secret. Well, if anyone was here for Ellen Coppock's memorial service on Friday, you got a hint, but you just don't know that you got a hint. You got a really, really, really big hint. So I'm just gonna leave you to stew on that. I'll leave you to stew on it. Okay, so their annual meeting is on June 2nd, so I will make sure that it is in the bulletin on the following Wednesday and that we say something in service on the 9th. Next Sunday is Music Sunday, by the way. Uh, Julie Bells and Sparks have all kinds of amazing things planned for you. Unfortunately, I won't be here in person, but it will be a fabulous Sunday. Now, you know what? This corner is being really, really ornery over here. We're just going to have to do something with this group. The peanut gallery over here. Um, let's see. OK, announcements. The People Who Get Things Done Awards, second annual of those, will be June 9th. And remember, this is where we honor all the volunteers the staff, all the people who make things happen here at UUCD. And you get to create the categories yourselves. So for example, the first year I did this, 
in a different church, somebody nominated another person for the person who drives the farthest to come to church every morning because she came from two states away. But because of where the state borders were, she was only driving an hour, but still, still an hour driving two states away. You can nominate best hugger, best volunteer, person who did the most to support the auction. You get to make up whatever the category is and nominate the person because everybody wins. And there is a link in the bulletin for you to be able to nominate. You can nominate as many people as you want and we will publish the names of all the people who win. Last year we had so many nominations that some of the folks did, weren't here to hear them, but this year we'll publish them all. Announcement number two. If anyone is willing, able, or interested in staying after to help clean up, your assistance would be greatly appreciated. Number three, I don't know what that means. Okay, delegates. General Assembly is coming. And for those who are not familiar, that is where all of the Unitarian Universalist congregations across the country send their delegates to a general assembly to vote on things that affect all of the churches. UUCD, because of its size, is entitled to five delegates. So far, three people have signed up to be delegates. There is no cost, but you will need to be available to participate in business sessions that happen Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, June 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, I think are the right dates. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And you can participate from the library here or from your home. It is all virtual. And as I said, there is no cost. So we need two more delegates for that. On June 1st, next Saturday, it, our, your incoming minister, Angeline Jackson, will officially earn the right to be called Reverend. She will be ordained. And there will be a watch party for her ordination in the library next Saturday. And you are all invited to come and participate in that. Yes, you can do it from home. The link is in the, was in the bulletin. Link was in the bulletin. OK. So what's going to happen here today? Now that everybody's kind of seated, you can get up as you need more food, coffee, whatever. We are going to pass the microphone around, and anyone who would like to share a poem or quote or very, very brief reading may do so. We do ask that you not read a whole chapter of a book. <laughs> and if you've come prepared with five, six, seven, or eight poems, please let everybody have a chance before you try to do multiple offerings. Does that sound like a plan? And we'll sing some in between. Okay, all right. And I'm going to open this up with one. Um, actually, Laurie, you wanna read this one? Because this weekend is Memorial Day. And I think that whatever your feelings are about the military and about war and about armed presence, period, we can't escape the fact that there are many Unitarian Universalists who serve in the armed services. And there is a book that was written that's called Bless Those Who Serve, which is a little pocket guide for UU soldiers. And it has in it a number of readings and there's even like little hymns and things for them to take with them when they are deployed. So we're going to begin with a reading from there. This is the Memorial Day Prayer by Barbara Peskin. Spirit of life, whom we have called by many names in thanksgiving and in anguish, bless the poets and those who mourn 
Send peace for the soldiers who did not make the wars, but whose lives were consumed by them. Let strong trees grow above graves far from home. Breathe through the arms of their branches. The earth will swallow your tears while the dead sing. No more, never again, remember me. For the wounded ones and those who received them back, let there be someone ready when the memories come, when the scars pull and the buried metal moves, and forgiveness for those of us who were not there for our ignorance. And in us, veterans in a forest of a thousand fallen promises, let new leaves of protest grow on our stumps. Give us courage to answer the cry of humanity's pain, and with our bare hands, out of full hearts, with all our intelligence, let us create the peace. Do we have any veterans in the room? Thank you. Thank you. Who'd like to share the first poem? Somehow I knew it would be you. Oh, you can, we're gonna bring the mic around. There you go. Self-portrait at 85. I have no alarm to say time to get up, only the passage of night and then light, telling me that a new day has arrived. Now is the time to arrive or else to stay in bed. What to do on this sunshiny day? Just another day in Davis, CA. Take a long walk, get on the phone, call up my sister, or sit down and write. <clears throat> on the other hand, want to rest for a while and see what comes up. After all, not many wannabe poets get to awake with nothing to do. Or else I might leap to my feet, take a cold shower, put on my clothes, review the papers, see what's new, check it out, sit down and write. Either way, I know at the end of the day, one more day of life has passed by. My mother lived for 99 years, but my father died at 78. I just figured out what that one announcement was that I did made a note for and couldn't figure it out. It is the Goodwill Poem from Kate. In the lost and found, a treasure trove we see, forgotten tales and memories waiting to be free. A lonely glove, a key without a lock, each item holds a story, a whispered shock. A scarf that once warmed a winter's chill, a book abandoned its pages still, a toy left behind seeking its friend in this sea of lost things where journeys end. Before they bid farewell to this transient space, we gaze upon them, each one a trace of, life's li of lives lived, moments shared, and dreams once sought in the lost and found where memories are caught. So let us pause before they depart and honor these relics each with a heart, for in their loss we find a common thread in the stories of us all, written and unread. All of the things that have been piling up in the church lost and found will be going away. They will be all be donated today this is your last chance to take a look through and see if something belongs to you. There are coats and gloves and water bottles and all kinds of things, and they will be rehomed today. Okay? Everything is in Lost in Fact. I'll have Kate bring it out for you all to see. She put it out already? Yeah, everything's on the rack over here. All right, next poem. Thanks to Kirk Bridgeway for bringing this poem to our Glacier Circle men's group about two years ago. Thanks to Kirk Ridgeway for bringing this poem to our Glacier Circle men's group about two years ago. 
This is Jasper Crow by Wendell Berry. I whisper over to myself the way of loss, the names of the dead. One by one, we lose our loved ones, our friends, our powers of work and pleasure, our landmarks, the days of our allotted time. One by one, the way we lose them, they return to us and are treasured up in our hearts. Grief, grief affirms them, preserves them, sets the cost. Finally, a man stands up alone, scored and charred like a burned tree, having lost everything and at the cost of only its loss, found everything and is ready to go. Now I am ready. I love that. Okay. Who's next? Whenever you're ready, Laurie. Okay, we're going to let Laurie. Oh, we go. Well, I'll start with a confession. I forgot we were doing this this morning, <laughs> so I didn't bring a poem. But uh, the Vocal Art Ensemble has had the privilege and pleasure of getting to know this poet, uh, Chelan Harder, I think. Um, we intersperse our songs with her poems. And our last concert is this afternoon at 4. And this is the poem I get to share. Cancel everything. Go sit in your yards. Make sunshine a priority. Turn your to-do list into whatever happens next. That's when the universe invites you to her magic show of exactly what is. So during one of uh, Minister Angeline's services, she mentioned the poet and author Bell Hooks, and I was surprised to hear some people say they hadn't heard of her. So I uh, looked up a poem, and let me just share a little of her bio. I'll try and be quick. She was born in rural Kentucky, earned her bachelor's degree at Stanford, her master's degree at University of Wisconsin-Madison, and her PhD at UC Santa Cruz. She went, moved from Santa Cruz to USC and spent quite a few years there uh, as a professor on their, uh, in their faculty, and then has gone on to teach at Yale, Oberlin, City College of New York, and then she got close to home and is now in Berea, Kentucky. She's authored over 30 books and was honored by uh, Publishers Weekly in 1981, after publication of Ain't I a Woman, Black Women and Feminism, it was named one of the top 20 most influential books of the previous 20 years. And I think you'll be able to identify, see why I've picked this uh, because of the, the themes that run through this poem. It's called Appalachian Elegy, sections one through six. One, hear them cry. The long dead, the long gone, speak to us from beyond the grave. Guide us that we may learn all the ways to hold tender this land. Hard clay, direct rock upon rock, charred earth. In time, strong green growth will rise here, trees back to life, native flowers, pushing the fragrance of hope, the promise of resurrection. Two. Such then is beauty surrendered against all hope. You are here again, turning slowly, nature as chameleon, all life change and changing again, awakening hearts, steady moving from unnamed loss into fierce deep grief that can bear all burdens. Even the long passage into a shadowy dark where no light enters. Three. Night moves through the thick dark, a heavy silence outside. Near the front window, a black bear stamps down plants, pushing back brush, fleeing man-made confinement, roaming unfettered, confident. Any place can become home. 
Strutting down a steep hill as though freedom is all in the now. No past, no present. Four. Earthworks, thick brown mud clinging, pulling a body down. Heard wounded earth cry. Bequeath to me the hoe, the hope, ancestral rights to turn the ground over, to shovel and shift, sift, until history rewritten, resurrected, returns to its rightful owners, a past to claim, yet another stone lifted to throw against the enemy, making way for new endings, random seeds spreading over the hillside, wild roses come by fierce wind and hard rain, unleashed furies. Five, small horses ride me, carry my dreams of prairies and frontiers, where once the first people roamed, claimed union with the earth, no right to own or possess, no sense of territory, all, boundary, all boundaries placed by unseen ones. Here I will give you thunder, shatter your hearts with rain, let snow soothe you, make your healing water clear, sweet, a sacred spring where the thirsty may drink, animals all. Six, listen, little sister, angels make their hope here in these hills. Follow me, I will guide you. Careful now, no trespass. I will guide you word for word, mouth for for mouth, all the holy ones embracing us, all our kin making home here. Renegade marooned, lawless fugitives grace these mountains. We have earth to bind us. The covenant between us can never be broken. Vows to live and let live. <laughs> This is called Silence. Uh, it's one of the shorter poems I wrote. So. <laughs> Silence between breaths, remembering the pause, the stillness of action. The silence of seething, not speaking the words that can hurt in reaction. Negative spaces in art, reproducing the cosmic black masses bare ground before a flower blooms, spaces not lyrics in music classes, the vibration of bowls, then silence just for a fraction, the moment of awe, explanation is noise, tears are reaction. Through silence we sense the universe ringing, the tree breathing, the river singing, Silence not captivated by poetry cited emerges when read from the page. We pause in the reading. We capture the space, thrilling, thrilling to the peace of the empty place. And silence, silence, silence. We have a lot of uh, poets in the audience who uh, might appreciate this poem about, well, the title, uh, it's by Brian Bilston, who is a poet I, who comes across my Facebook feed occasionally. The title is, On Failing to Write an Epic Poem for World Poetry Day. <laughs> this is not the poem I had hoped to write when I sat at my desk and the page was white. You see, there were other words that I'd had in mind, yet this is what I leave behind. I thought it was a poem to eradicate war, one of such power it would heal all the sores of a world torn apart by conflict and schism, but it isn't. Lovers, I'd imagined, would quote from it daily. Mothers would sing it to soothe crying babies, and whole generations would be given new hope. Nope. I had grand aspirations, believe me, I tried. Humanity examined with lessons applied, 
but the right words escaped me, so often they do, have these in lieu. <laughs> I have it. Uh, my name is Mehdi Mogadam, and I, I'm Matt Coleman Barks, who is a translator of uh, Rumi's uh, several times, and he does it with the music and uh, so so good. So, but I have little shorts from Hafiz, and then if I ha get a chance later on, I give some of the roomies. Hafez says, the sun never asked the earth, you owe me. With that kind of love, you can light up the whole sky. <laughs> and I give roomies later on. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Oh, well, I would like to uh, sing a, a short, a short poem by uh, by uh, William Blake. I'm uh, not going to uh, read uh, the Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright, which is, uh, uh, which is Blake's uh, greatest poem. This is just a four-line poem, and I should. Uh, and I should say that the first word is a man, but in this case, it's the gender, it's the gender, a gender, a gender a, 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 a neutral word. A man was made for joy and woe a clothing for the soul divine. And when this we safely know, no, excuse me, and when this, and when this, and, and when this we surely know, or something like that, <laughs> uh, 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 then, then through the world we safely go. <laughs> I love that. Thank you all. Hang on one second. We're going to take one quick little song break, and I'm going to ask for some help with the offering. This month. I'm trying to remember what, what week this is of the month. But on the second and fourth Sundays, our plate is shared with an organization in the area that does amazing work in furtherance of the mission of the church. This month, this is the fourth Sunday, thank you. This month, our offering will go to Team Davis. And you were able to see the video with their song last week. Is that, are you connected? There you go, Team Davis, there's, there's your UUCD connection. So we're going to actually just kind of casually pass, pass the plate around. If this is your first time here, let the plate pass you by as your presence is our gift. And for an offertory, while that's happening, why don't we sing Spirit of Life? Speak.
Thank you. And big shout out for Alexander, who I just noticed is not in here, and who knows that Spirit of Life, we've got the words for it, he put it up there. He didn't know that I was going to say, let's sing Spirit of Life. <sighs> this is the best staff team ever. Yeah. I got to tell you, guys, if you don't know how lucky you are, you real, I'm, I'm going to tell you now, you have an amazing staff team here. Please always remember that. Treat them well. Treat them with respect and kindness because they are good. OK. Next. You ready? Uh, yeah. Is anybody else? Oh, is anybody else ready now? Oh. Oh, no. You're not. <laughs> All right, because this, this is not exactly a poem, I guess, or at least it wasn't written as one. Um, sorry. It's from, um, it's from Ursula Le Guin's book, The Dispossessed. And this, this, it almost feels like a poem because of the way she writes, and also it just always stuck with me. Speak not of what men deserve. For we each of us deserve everything, every luxury that was ever piled in the tombs of the dead kings. And we each of us deserve nothing, not a mouthful of bread in hunger. Have we not eaten while another starved? Will you, will you punish us for that? Will you reward us for the virtue of starving while others ate? No man earns punishment, no man earns reward. Free your mind of the idea of deserving, the idea of earning, and you will begin to be able to think. That's good. See two over here. I'm Deb visiting, but I have a poem from Dorothy Parker written in 1926. She was a humorist and a writer and a member of the Algonquin Round Table in New York. The poem is Recurrence. We shall have our little day. Take my hand and travel still, round and round the way, up and down the little hill. It is good to love again. Scan the renovated skies, dip and drive the idling pen. Silently tint the paling lies. Trace the dri dripping, pierced heart. Speak the fair, insistent verse. Vow to God and slip apart. Little better, little worse. Would we not know before how shall end this prettiness? One of us must love the more. One of us must love the less. Thus, this it is, and so it goes. We shall have our day, my dear, where unwilling dies the rose. Buds the new, another year. Along with Pat, I'll make a pitch for the Vocal Art Ensemble concert today at 4 at the Methodist Church on Anderson. And along with us, too, you'll hear Cliff and Jerry singing. So mostly it's music, but there's interscattered with uh, really nice poems. So my belief is she assigned the poems based confidence in your ability to deliver them. So the people that have two poems that are five minutes long, that's not me. So with, the, <laughs> with, with, with that in mind, here's my poem. Oh God, unyielding world, I want to be supple enough for you. So I do have an aid memoir here for the first poem that I ever memorized when I was in third grade. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry there aren't any kids in the room because this is from a children's anthology and interjects a note of whimsy amongst what have been mostly solemn poems that we heard this morning. The common cormorant or shag 
lays eggs inside a paper bag. The reason you will see, no doubt, it is to keep the lightning out. But what these unobservant birds have never noticed is that herds of wandering bears may come with buns and steal the bags to hold the crumbs. Uh, I'm Mike Searle, and this poem is Mr. Nice Guy. I do not want to be known as a nice guy. Nice guy is milk toast, and not to boast, but I would rather hold a streak of temerity. I want to have the courage to fight when all around me fall. I will build a wall, and I will call to the world I will not go down in defeat. Nice guy would only retreat. I want to be intentional about loving with passion and grace. When others see my face, I want them to break out in smiles, not hives. Because I'm like a warm blanket in their lives and will spend a thousand breaths breaking out in a pox of laughter. Nice guy is too meek to matter. I will resolutely pursue the heart of my wife. For the rest of her life, I'll make the study of her eyes a quest, and every breath in her chest and nuance of her sunburst smile. I'll come to know and perfect the art of making her laugh just so I can hear her voice. Nice guy won't make love a choice. I will not doubt the worth of a person. I will only speak after I think, and I will raise a stink. When people's gets hearts get lost in the discussion, I will speak with percussion. Blow by weighty blow, the full count I will go. Nice guy fears the big KO. When hearts bleed, I will patch them. When folks fall, I will catch them, snatch them from whole batches of whipped backs. With the broken, I will stand to lend a hand with the shattered hearts to reattach them. Nice guy will only tax them. Nice guy always finishes. First, he's a bursted bubble of trouble, stuck on daily double. He wears a mask of happy faces to hide his focus on his own reflection. He's got a complexion of abdication. Nice guy lives a quiet life of desperation. When I am laid to rest, I do not want my headstone to read, always paid his taxes, or never missed a Sunday sermon. People would say, I was determined. People would say, I gave my all. For those who could not stand, I stood tall. For those who could not speak, I spoke that I never let a person be a joke. They'll say I had a heart for the hearts of others, that I tried to make all my brothers, that I fought for the right to love and be loved, that when the darkness came, my voice led, that when their hearts would bleed, my heart bled, that I was heels overhead to bring their worth back from the dead. Don't tell me of their value, you've got misgivings, because your hands aren't dirty from what you call living. Don't tell me how their skin color makes them stupid, how their sexual orientation makes your vexation lucid, that your solution is elusive while rooted in being abusive. I won't turn a blind eye to the hate you supply. This is my rallying cry. No more, Mr. Nice Guy. Who's next? Coming this way. Hello all, my name's Cassandra. Um, oh, okay. Is this good? Yeah. Okay, sweet. Um, it's, it's a roomy poem, so I know, I know we've got some roomy fans in the room. Um, this one's about uh, accepting emotions even if they're bad ones. So, um, here we go. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival. A joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. 
He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. And meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. That's right. Okay. Has everyone had a chance to do one once? Oh, oh we're going this way. I'm Mary Lou. This is my poem today. There once was an interim minister <laughs> who all over traveled UU lands with her constant companion, the Reverend Dr. Janitha. who listens intensely to all the ideas the Reverend Connie commands. <laughs> if only my dog, Reverend Dr. Janitha Ridley, really listened. <laughs> this is Come Before from Something Like Magic by Brian Andreas. There will come a moment in your life when you look into the future and wonder if the way you love the world matters. And almost without thinking, you'll want to find someone who already answered this question you never thought to ask. It's hard to believe, but the ones who came before hope you come to this. You'll look in their eyes and see what they could not speak and even if they could, you would not have heard until now. Because how do you say, I remember, when, you, when so many people shake their heads and say, remember what? But in the moment when you see again who we all are, everything changes, and you'll love the world differently. Because of that, and I promise, for the ones who come after, the ones who may never know, it matters. Love that. Okay. Has everyone? Has everyone had a chance to go once? Love by. B B Billy Collins. The boy at the far end of the train car kept looking behind him as if he were afraid or expecting someone. And then she appeared in the glass door of the forward car and he rose and opened the door and let her in. And she entered the car carrying a large black case in the unmistakable shape of a cello. She looked like an angel with a high forehead and somber eyes and her hair was tied up behind her neck with a black bow. And because of all that, he seemed a little awkward in his happiness to see her. Whereas she was simply there, perfectly existing as a creature with a soft face who played the cello. And the reason I am writing this on the back of a manila envelope now that they have left the train together is to tell you that when she turned to lift the large, delicate cello onto the overhead rack, I saw him looking up at her. And what she was doing, the way the eyes of, painted, of saints are painted, when they are looking up at God, and when he is doing something remarkable, something that identifies him as God. Mark. So uh, this is by somebody who goes by Pine Tree Poet. Um, Let your guide uh, be warm fires, and not just the fires you build with wood, but the fires you ignite with wonder. Um, and so I have one more announcement. I'm kind of cheating. Uh, if you want to go camping tonight, uh, 4 p.m., 
uh, if you're setting up a tent. Otherwise, if you just want to hang out, five for the grill and seven for fire. So, yeah. <laughs> that could be a poem. Has everyone had a chance to do one poem? Because I am mindful of time, and it is 11.30. OK. I have one final by way of a, what shall we call it, closing words? One more for you. And this is called Love Beyond God by Reverend Adam Lawrence Dyer. What if every time you woke, your sigh was felt by every being on earth? What if every time you spoke, your words were heard by every ear on earth? What if when you told a joke, you tickled the senses of every smile on earth? What if with each tender stroke, you shared your touch with every hand on earth? What if? When your heart broke, you tasted the tears running down every cheek on earth. No bond or brand or guilted yoke. Surely this is love that reaches beyond, that holds one to another and every one, every other to one, no matter the color or where we're from. This is now. This is we. This is love. This is God. And this is love beyond God. May you always remember that. OK. We need a closing hymn. Let's see, what about this little light of mine? I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You can do better than that. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Building up a world, building up a world. I'm going to let it shine. Building up a world. I'm going to let it shine. Building up a world. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Last time, this little light. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. OK. Woo! One closing announcement from Shannon. Thank you all for your poetry today, for filling up my heart, going into the rest of the day. Every one of you can help me with cleanup. <laughs> the very smallest thing you can do is to put your dirty napkin in the organics cart, not in the paper recycling, please. If it has coffee, crumbs, food, snot, it goes in the organics, not in the trash and not in the paper recycling. The other thing you can do is pre-sort your utensils into the one bin that says utensils 
and your plates and cups in the other bin. That'll help our dishwashers. Now, if you want to do more, come see me. There's a lot to do. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have an amazing day. Thank you, Thomas and Alexander and everybody who helped in the kitchen.